church. This is the American Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the church of what's happening now. You know, when I started this church here about 10 years ago, uh, going around doing videos and talking with people and also uh, doing a talk show with uh, one of the radio stations here in Plainfield, New Jersey, where I'm at, uh, it was to reach out to people that did not have a voice. And what we are finding out now today is that there's many men of God and many men and women of God that don't have a church, that don't have a church house. So what I'm decided to do is to take the church to the street. I'll take the church not so much to the street because that sounds just so um, stereotypical, but to take the church to the communities. So you will see over the next year as the snow fall, as it get cold, and then it get warm again, spring come and summer, that we will be a church that's really in the community and reaching out to many of those that believe in the Word of God and is preaching the Word of God that, that don't have the structure behind them or maybe not uh, the time do not permit them to be able to build a house of worship but also people that have a Word of God that's in their heart, people that are speaking from their heart because I really believe that and not um, saying anything against those that do have a structure but the church is on the outside and it's easier, it's easy for uh, a lot of us that, uh, that's out, out in the field, let's just say, uh, to, to try and uh, uh, throw a, a negative blow to those that had the responsibility of having a church uh, a home in a, or, or that, 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 uh, where they have built a church and they have to watch out after their structure. It becomes uh, more than just a church when you have a church and you, you I say this to many ministers, many reverends and bishops, when you have a church and you have a structure, the thing is today is to keep the church because people don't realize that, you know, you can lose a church too today because of economics. So uh, we're not throwing any uh, uh, negative blows at those that have a structure because it's very important. You know, if I woke up on Sunday morning and I didn't see people assembling, getting into their cars or trucks or motorcycles, whatever they do today, and go to church, I would say, hey, what's going on? Even though they may not be going to a church that I favor or whatever the case may be, but if I don't see that motion, we become so conditioned with that motion of church that we just automatically take it for granted. But that right there can come to a stop too. So we're not throwing any negative charcoal, at, uh, burning charcoal at those that have a structure. But we just want to reach out to those that don't. And to you know bring, and even some of the people that don't have a structure that may want to say a word of God, they can come on and let Every word, every person have breath, say some words. Uh, today I want to go to uh, in, uh, um, Exodus, do one of my favorite chapters, uh, which is uh, Exodus uh, chapter 2, uh, uh, verse 1, and I'm going to read down and just talk about the, the beginning of hope, you know, uh, 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 baby Moses, where uh, his actual mother got to, to breastfeed him today, uh, breastfeed him in the uh, uh, of course, his adopted mother with funds and things of that nature was able to really help mold him. So let's talk about Moses. Chapter 2, Exodus chapter 2, verse 1, I'll read down. And there went a man of the house of Levi, and he took a wife, daughter of the Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child she hid him three months now why did she hide him and when she could no longer hide him she took for him an ark of brushes and and dubbed it with what they call slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the figs by the river bank, hoping that someone with stability could find this child and to give him a home. And his sister stood afar off, so the child was never left in the dark to wait what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, which I believe that they calculated that. 
And her maiden walked along by the riverside. And when she saw that the ock among the figs, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And a oh, hope, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of those Hebrew children. At that time, the king had already outlawed any uh, male children being born. Because if we could stop the male, we could stop the, uh, uh, stop the honest reproduction of babies, of, of, uh, of kids, of, of young uh, Hebrews being born. Now, what do I mean by honest? Back in that day, the Hebrews were in truth. Are slaves and they were to be condemned to be slaves for many 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 years so by uh, killing off the men or not allowing the male child to live at all then what that would mean that if the woman went and had uh, a baby by an Egyptian then at in that course of time then it wouldn't be an honest Hebrew child so it would be of no substance for them at that time so um, Moses was a Hebrew child. And so he was basically an outlaw at that time. And just to show how things come come to effect, that there's so many situations today. Well, you know, when you look back, I look back on many conversations in the United States and I just sometimes I shake my head because I don't believe that anyone fell for those games years ago. But they did because it was a time of need for them. It was a time of growth for them and they a lot of people didn't care, but then there was a lot of people that did not, that would not stand by and just let things fall apart and knew that a lot of stuff was just outright hogwash. And the daughter of Pharaoh came to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the figs, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept, and the compassion on him, and said, and she had, Pharaoh's daughter had compassion on him, and she said, this is one of those Hebrew children. What did she mean by that? One of those children that was outlawed. Then she said to, then she, uh, uh, then said, his sister to Pharaoh's daughter. Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse for the child? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go! And the maiden went and called the child's mother. Sometimes things are set up in a way that we don't know all truth behind it what was going down because Pharaoh's daughter sure did not know that that was the child's mother. But to put the child in a situation so he could grow, you know, was a fabulous thing. And then, of course, being paid, I'm sure the guilt was that she couldn't raise her own son as hers. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maiden went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed the child. You know, uh, wondering minds today would wonder, did Moses ever know that this woman that nursed him was his mother? Wondering minds today would want to know, did the woman... I'm sure the woman took care of the child as if it was hers, but was there ever an attempt to tell Moses during those times that, you know, I am your mother? Did she ever contact Moses later? You know, these, you see, the mind as, you know, as uh, uh, the evolution of the human mind grows, we will sit down and wonder about these things. You know, we were as scholars, you think that uh, he ever knew that the nurse, that his wet nurse was his mother? Did she ever make any inkling? These are just things that we think because, see, today we have to take the word of God and take it just take it out of the contents that we put it in. We put the word of God in the contents at one time where 
at that time it was suitable. But today it's not. Uh, today it's not that irrelevant to what it was 50 years ago. Meaning because society has changed. The transmission of, uh, of information has changed so much. So we have to take things today and we have to change how we do things. We have to, uh, the church, the word of God will continue to reach the people if we ourselves mature. We have to mature the fact that right now I can send a text to, to the state of California within minutes, uh, uh, within seconds, and I can be retrieved back within seconds. We have to change our whole way of thinking, so therefore we are know where we're at, and therefore everybody can get some of this word of God, because the word of God would be here if they colonize on the moon, you see. So, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Mm -hmm. Moses, the name Moses. There has long been a great controversy about the origin of Moses' name, whether it was Hebrew or Egyptian origin. One is clear both sources are uh, uh, afro edenic It is said that the name that, that she called his name Moza because I drew him out of the water. Most interpretation identifies the she as Pharaoh's daughter. And this has led many of many uh, uh, to assume an Egyptian origin for the name Moses. Whether his name was Egyptian origin or whether his name was uh, Hebrew, it doesn't matter because the work that God bestowed on this man, the work that he bestowed on this man is work that many people today would shy away. It was Moses that changed the whole course of humanity. Again, this is the American Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the church of what's happening now here in Plainfield at Cedar Brook Park. I just want to let the, the family and YouTube and, and all the web browsers that will get this, this uh, uh, video that we are out here and we're going to continue as long as God gives me strength. This is my Moses. Uh, I may not have the money to do what I want, but I was for the blessing of God to have a job and be able to buy uh, the equipment I have. And I'm going to take this equipment and, and before I give this camera away to somebody, I want to use it up. I want to use this camera and tripod up where it's almost like second nature, like it's my, my left hand or my right hand. But I want to give the word to uh, take this stuff uh, uh, that we video and take it to the, uh, uh, the web and let everybody know that the word of God is still here. So again, American Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the church of what's happening now. Thank you. Goodbye.